President Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin set to speak again. The leaders will hold a phone call today, their second this month, amid rising tensions over Ukraine. The two are expected to discuss the parameters of their upcoming meeting scheduled for January 10th. Now, Putin requested the call, and he isn't backing down from demanding a guarantee that Ukraine won't be able to join NATO, that they will not be allowed, excuse me, to join uh, NATO. That's the crux of all of this. I want to bring in uh, Center for American Security co-chair and Fox News contributor General Keith Kellogg. General, you know, this, upco- this, this late-day scheduled call, to be clear, this was not on the agenda at the beginning of the week for President Biden. Uh, it's going to be interesting because President Biden has yet to really, it seems to me, really be a strong, give Putin a strong pushback, if you will. Why are we not uh, sounding the alarm over all those troops on the Ukrainian border? Yeah, first of all, Cheryl, thanks for having me. Good morning. Look, Putin, and you're right, Putin requested a call. Putin is playing this game strategically. I, I wrote an article yesterday for Fox and, and called Checkers and Chess. And basically, we play checkers. We move one game at a time, one move at a time. And Putin, like a grandmaster in chess, is moving about eight. He's thinking about eight moves in advance. What he's trying to do right now is he's trying to break apart the alliance, the NATO alliance, the European alliance, and get us involved in Ukraine and the discussions on Ukraine. You know, we haven't been part of the Ukraine discussions. That's been part of what's called the Minsk process, where we have been just an observer in this and not a partner. And he's bringing us in, and he slowly is bringing us into the game, and then he's going to kind of put demands on us and what he wants to have happen. And, and President Biden needs to push back really, really hard on him on what he wants and, and declare that we're going to uh, uh, uphold uh, Ukraine sovereignty. When you look at what he's done, I mean, I would throw this right back on Putin and say, look, in 1991, as part of the Minsk Protocol, when they dissolved the Soviet Union, you said Ukraine was an independent nation. And wh- why are you going back on an agreement that you all signed with you, Belarus, and Ukraine. And he's trying to bring Biden into this. And I think uh, it's a big mistake. The second thing is, because I just don't trust Putin at all, he's actually doing this when when Biden's on vacation. So he doesn't have his trusted advisors around him. They may be on the phone call. And I was on 18 different calls with Putin and President Trump. And I see how this game is being played. He's very strategic. He thinks strategically. And Biden needs to think the same way. And I don't think he is. I think he's thinking one move at a time. I think Putin's thinking eight moves at a time. Well, that's what I don't understand about all of this. And this is what I was kind of alluding to in my first question to you, is that if you look at the history uh, of of everything that Vice President Harris has said or President Biden says, they say the biggest threat, Harris just said that this week, the biggest threat to our country is democracy, you know, the loss of democracy. That's debatable. Uh, But if if they're so focused on, you know, free people and democracy and, and, uh, you know, the, the principles that are America, then Ukraine is under threat. And he put 100,000 troops at that border. Oh, he took back 10,000. You know, come on. I mean, that's, yeah. that's what I'm saying. And I agree with you. Yeah. You cannot trust Putin. So, you know, President Biden says it's like one standard for America, but then it seems to be another standard for Ukraine. What is it? Yeah. Well, look, I think he's bluffing right now. I think Putin is. I don't think he's got the troops to task, as they call it. He doesn't have enough troops right now, even near the border, to go into Ukraine. Ukraine's the second largest country uh, in Europe, and it would take a lot of troops to get in there. And I think Biden needs to realize this and just push back on him. You know, the problem we have with Putin is people listen to him, and then they don't really push back on him. You know, Trump did that. Trump would pick up the phone and call him and say, hey, Vlad, you're you're pushing a little bit too far on this. Back off a little bit. And I think Mm. what Putin does is he respects strength. And we are not demonstrating any strength at all. And he looks back on what we've done recently, be it Afghanistan or how we don't do anything about immigration on the border. He looks at weakness in government. He looks weakness in the chief executive. And he pushes on that weakness. And I think he's doing it quite well. Yeah. Yeah, I can, I can see President Trump, by the way, saying that. Uh, I want to move on to a domestic issue with you here. So the 2022 defense yeah. spending bill that Biden just signed into mm-hmm. law, it's got a 2.7% mm-hmm. raise for service members. But when right. you factor in right. current inflation at 6.8%, this turns into a pay cut for our troops. And then they're also talking about cutting back stipends. General Kellogg, your thoughts on what they're they're actually doing this move against I'm saying against the military 
Well, I, I, when you talk about the pay raise, let me just focus in on the pay raise. You, you're right, it was 2.7 percent on the NDAA. Really, when you're factoring in inflation, it really should have been about 6.8 percent out there. Look, people need to understand, a soldier in the Army or the Navy, the Marine Corps, whatever it is, they draw about $20,000 a year. That's about the same as a fry cook at McDonald's. And for we, what we ask these young men and women to do is absolutely incredible. And they deserve that pay raise, a much larger pay raise. And we did need to do it for retention, to make sure we keep them in the military, but also to recognize what they do for this nation. And sometimes we forget about that. And I think every night when people hit their knees and they, they pray, Look, thank God for the young men and women we have in uniform and what we ask them to do. You know, these are the same young men and women that went to Abbey Gate in Afghanistan and lost their lives. And we should recognize that. And I think that supporting our military in any way we can is very, very critical, especially when it comes to pay, the resources that we give them, the equipment that we give them, and the backing that we give them as well. Mm. And I keep thinking about a service member that, say, on a base in, say, southern Texas, who's, to your point, making $40,000, and they're taking away your stipend, and then you're getting a tiny, tiny percentage yeah. raise when inflation yeah. is beating that by exponential marks. It's just, it's, it's offensive. It really is offensive. I hope that that Pentagon decision is revisited, I think, after the first of the year. General yeah. Kellogg, it's great to have you. General Keith Kellogg, please come back, and Happy New Year.